So today we're going to talk about a nice mention that Chia got from Linus Tech Tips channel talking about in particular what's going on with the price of hard drives that are used on eBay, the acceptability of hard drives that are used on eBay, and some of the things that are surrounding that. And what I see is the bigger macro that is going on that's impacting what we're seeing right now as far as not just hard drive prices, but a lot more. Let's dive in. So yesterday, Chia got a nice mention from the Linus Tech Tips channel. And thank you for talking about used drives, the value proposition of used drives, and the safety protections that people get on eBay, and some of the things that people should be looking for if they're buying used drives. And certainly, the mention of Chia farming in the video is a big one because it is one of the lowest uses of drives out there. They actually discovered some people were probably using Chia farming as what they were selling and marketing them as, yet they probably had usage patterns that were well outside of what you would expect for Chia farming. So that was interesting. We learned a lot, I think, from that video is going to give you a greater level of capability than you would be able to dollar for dollar afford if you just bought new. Now, there are some things that you want to be on the lookout for. My take on that coming really quick. So we did have Bram chime in here. This is Bram Cohen, founder and creator of Chia. And he was talking about the video and uh, some of the things that were talked about in it. And they did, uh, it was kind of interesting bust that some of the people were saying they were Chia drives because Chia is a very low IOPS usage of a hard drive. I thought that was good. Uh, poor investor actually chimed in and he said, you mean the fact that they didn't mention farming once, but they actually did mention farming in the video. And Bram did point that out. Uh, they had it written down below. They said farming, not mining at one point in the video. But, uh, you know, if you were just listening along, maybe you didn't catch that at the same time. I think there's a bigger thing that's going on in the overall, you know, sphere of the economy that's impacting this. And that is we are in a recession. We've probably been in a recession for some time. The impacts of that recession are manifesting. You're seeing that not just in hard drives, though. So we're going to take a look here at what's going on in some of the bigger tech scenes out there. So we see Seagate saying they're gonna be cutting 3,000 employees. Now, this is uh, just as of October 26. I don't know if Western Digital is gonna follow suit, but they have a really good uh, synopsis here about that. And this was down here a little bit lower that uh, they are essentially, as a result of the overbuild that happened as a result of the coronavirus pandemic, again, Great demand for IT services, IT products happened during that time span. And certainly there was an influx of cash that people were pouring into things. We're kind of getting that hangover effect in certain markets, uh, hard drives. As a matter of fact, almost all used computer gear. And we're going to go over some other things here. We're going to talk about some like insane deals on RAM and Epics that are just wild. And I've been tracking the price on hard drives for about five months on a pretty much daily basis. And the price has continued to trend down. There is some stability that we're seeing. I haven't seen it go below certain numbers. Uh, so it feels like we've been in the same range for some time now as far as where the price is. But there definitely was a contraction as a result of the retail channel availability. In the Linus Tech Tip video, they talked about some of the difference between different drive types. And one of the big things is if you're dealing with white label and green label, I saw some of theirs were green label, some of theirs were possibly white label, and what those differences are, what they mean. One returned, had possibly no defects whatsoever, put a new label on it with Seagate's name, green label in that instance. White label, they do not put their name back on. Uh, they essentially usually have something that they've repaired in the drive. Almost every single one of those has cosmetic defects. I could not see them putting their name on them and putting them out there as something other than, you know, well, this has some dents or some dings or some scratches. So I don't see them doing that with the white label drives that I get and I resell. So I would say that there's probably a tie in there to the quality and appearance of what you're getting, whether that's going to go green or whether that's going to go white. And that seems to be based upon what the level of repair was done. That's different from the used channel. Now they fin they did mention some Toshibas in there. I have not seen really great information about the Toshiba drives myself. I have always been a little bit wary of them, mainly because of some of the backblaze reporting that's been done on them. Uh, sound off, let me know if you've got Toshiba drives and how they're doing for you. But I think if we're looking at, you know, the white labels versus green labels, 
you do have differences. And I actually think I beat the prices on almost every single one of those if you are a channel member. And that is, again, a 3% or a 5% discount on everything in your order. And that is at a $1.99 membership or a $7.99 membership for those two different various levels. But I do beat their prices. Almost everything that I sell, white label, a lot of it SaaS, almost all of it high capacity. I think those things age well. Uh, I think if you're looking at your eight terabyte drives today, you might be a little bit wary, depending upon what your electric rate is, with their 24-7, 365 operation, especially for something like chia farming. I know that four terabyte drives for me, like actually about three point something, stop making you know really great sense. Luckily, I don't run any three terabyte drives for chia you know, operations, but having 18 terabyte, 16 terabyte, 14 terabyte and greater does give me a longevity as far as whatever happens next with my electric rates. Not expecting an electric rate increase, but throughout the globe, we're seeing electric rate increases. And I've got a piece that I'll be talking about here sometime very shortly, which, wow, the uh, numbers that uh, somebody sent me from the UK are like, they're absurd. I don't know how they, uh, it, it must make survival difficult. And so I can only imagine that there's a lot of other places in the world going through that. And density gives you fewer running drives. The other thing is you're looking at about 5.6 watts per drive runtime running. So the more terabytes you cram on there, the more efficient it's going to be to actually run a higher density drive. From what I read on the specs, usually about 5.6 watts all the way up to 18 terabytes seems to be kind of the norm. Now, let's take a look at what's actually happening, in my opinion, and why you're seeing not just cheap drives. You see like the prices fall on AMD Epics. These are really good processors. And there's some people in my uh, Discord that have been watching along with what's going on with AMD Epics like Hawks. Uh, and so they might appreciate this piece. Uh, but the price on AMD Epics, even over the past one month, since I was checking some prices, I went back, checked some of the Discord chats about it, have dropped precipitously. So we are seeing some like really great chips that are just coming down in price like amazing. Like this 7B12, this was like 14, 1300 just a month ago. Now it's at 850. So, I mean, that is a cheap, crazy price. It's not just hard drives is where I'm going with this. It is the broader ecosphere. Look at the 7542, 760 bucks for this now. I mean, these are good chips. These are in-demand chips. I mean, even the 7501, 32 cores, like no vendor lock, 389. There's really good deals that can be had. Links in the description below to these exact items if you're interested in them. I thought these were just crazy prices. Not just that, DDR4. So DDR4 prices at good speeds, 2400 ECC. Price, $197. That's for 64 gigabyte DIMMs. Two 64 gigabyte DIMMs for $197. Like that price has come down tremendously from where it was. 2400 of course being a little bit more desirable than 2133 so if you're going to be up by ddr4 you might as well go for that extra speed bump and you get that with a pretty cheap price point you haven't seen these prices in my viewing of what's been going on for uh, ever like i haven't seen the price of ddr4 this low ever ddr3 absolutely at incredibly cheap prices as a matter of fact i'm going to have to knock my prices down on the ddr3 that i've got still because I, I don't think it's going to move any other way. And so I think that is what's going on in the wider sphere. You look at tech right now, a lot of pressure. We've got Twitter laying off people. A lot of other companies have followed along with that, and they're laying off people. As I showed you, 3,000 people at Seagate. I don't know what's going on at Western Digital. I can say that there's a lot of pressure right now in the IT sphere resulting from the contraction in the economy. And so that is just to be expected. I think we're going to see this trend continue at least for another six months, possibly, hopefully not much longer. I think the look back period when they actually revise the numbers, which they seem to usually revise the numbers, could show that we've been in a recession for a while already also. So whether we are able to start hitting a bottom trough point in a couple of months here is a good question. Sound off. Let me know what your thoughts are on that and what you are doing to prepare for that. I know myself, I am trying to conserve my operating running costs as much as possible by having systems that can come on and off. I'm doing that by being really intelligent about my Proxmox setup 
as well because I don't want all of the things to have to be on for Quorum. And there's a way to do that. And I'm going to show you guys in the next Proxbox series that we have done or that we will be doing. And if you haven't caught up to speed on some of the Proxbox stuff I've done in the past, there is a playlist in the links below that has a bunch of videos on how to set up a high availability cluster in Proxmox with shared storage. We're going to be doing some really cool stuff though. We're going to actually use TrueNAS to create storage and Proxmox will be using that storage among its clusters. So that'll be some fun stuff there as well. All right, everybody, sound off. Let me know what you think. Also hit subscribe and like while you're down there. And thanks everybody that has been tuning into the live streams. I really appreciate that. And hopefully the quality of those just gets better and better. And we will see you guys next time.